the children pulled out of Annie and Clarabel one morning and raced down to the beach. They have a vicar Sunday school, explained Thomas. I'm busy this evening, but the station master says I can ask you to take them home. Of course I will, promised Percy. The children had a lovely day, but at tea time it got very hot. Dark clouds loomed overhead. Then came lightning, thunder and rain. The children only just managed to reach shelter before the deluge began. Annie and Clarabelle stood at the platform. The children scrambled in. Can we go home please, station master? asked the vicar. The station master called Percy. Take the children home quickly please, he ordered. Beamed down on Percy's boiler. Ugh! Oh, ugh! He shivered and thought of his nice dry shed. Then he remembered. A promise is a promise, he told himself. So here goes. His driver was anxious. The river was rising fast. It foamed and swirled fiercely threatening to flood the country any minute. The rain beat in Percy's face. I wish I could see where, I wish I could see, I wish I could see, he complained. They left a cutting and found themselves in water. Oh, my wheel, shivered Percy. It's cold, but he struggled on. Oh, whoosh! He hissed. It's sloshing my fire. They stopped and backed their coaches to the cutting and waited while the guard found a telephone. He returned looking gloomy. We can't go we couldn't go back if we wanted, he said. The bridge near the junction is down. The fireman went to the guard's van carrying a hatchet. Hello, said the guard. You look fierce. I want some dry wood for Percy's pot fire, please. They broke up some boxes, but that did not satisfy. The fireman. I'll have some of your floorboards, he said. What? My nice floor? Grumbled the guard. I only swept the floor this mor. I only swept it this morning. But he found a hatchet and helped. So they had plenty of wood stored in Percy's bunker. His fire burnt well now. He felt he felt warm and comfortable again. <laughs> oh dear, thought Percy sadly. Harold's come to laugh at me. Bump! Something thudded onto Percy's boiler. Ow! he exclaimed in a muffled voice. That's really too bad. He needn't throw things. His driver unwound the parachute from Percy's indignant front. Harold isn't throwing things at you, he laughed. He's dropping hot drinks for us. Drink of cocoa and felt better. Percy had steam up now. Peep, peep. Thank you, Harold, he whistled. Come on, let's go. The water lapped his wheels. Ugh, he shivered. It crept up and up and up. It reached his ash pan. Then it sloshed at his fire. Whoosh. steam but he plunged bravely on I promised he panted I promised he piled his fire high with wood and so they piled his fire, fire high with wood and managed to keep him steaming I must do it he gasped I must I must I must he made a last great effort and stood exhausted but triumphant on rails 
which were clear of the flood. He rested to get them back. Then thought the train home. Then brought the train home. Three cheers for Percy, called the vicar and the children. Children nearly raised the roof. The fat controller arrived in Harold. Then, Harold told me you were a uh, wizard, Percy. He says he can beat you at some things, Percy snorted. But not at being a submarine, he chuckled. I don't know what you what you've both been playing at, but I but I, but I won't ask. But I do know that you are a really useful engine. Oh, sir, whispered Percy.